uh, Ted actually gave him one of the highest compliments a man could give, that he was the number one authority exposing a uh, MK Ultra Michael Aquino, former head of the National Security. What's his name again? So, Doug Millar. I think I've heard that name. Let me write Doug it down. Doug Millar. Yeah, he was arrested at Bohemian Grove a couple of years ago. And uh, you've got to interview him, Alex. Believe me, he knows his stuff. And he goes, he went around to Michael Aquino's house uh, right around the neighborhood, passed out like 100, 200 flyers telling people what Michael Aquino is really like, the former head of the National Security Agency. And uh, you got to listen to him. It'll just be a thrill. A thrill. And I also would like some advice on uh, about an hour from now. I'm planning on going to our city council here in San Jose. They only give me two minutes, and I want you to tell me what you'd say and talk slow on SB 277. And I'll uh, hear you uh, uh, just go slow because I, I am slow. Say that again, sir. I'm going to give a speech to the mayor and city council in San Jose in about an hour. And I get two minutes, so uh, I want you to tell me what I should say. And I'm going to. Sure, write that's what I thought you said, brother. You're a super smart talker yourself. It's not you have a lot of info. I would. Um, I'd get up there and talk about whatever issue you think is most important. I mean, I, I'm always flattered that listeners ask me for advice, but uh, I just think you know that um, whatever you think is most important, whatever is in your heart, whatever's in your mind, I would just tell them that everybody can see the world's changing for the worse right now in many ways. Good people need to get involved. And whatever corruption is going on in their town or city, they need to stand up to it. Uh, and then hit some of the issues that you think are most important. Thank you for holding, brother. I'm going to do five minutes of overdrive and go to Alan, Frank, Spirit of Freedom, and others. Then David Knight, host, the fourth hour. I know we got loaded phone lines, and we'll get to them. And we kick the next hour off here in about seven minutes. So, I'm not against all these poor, desperate Latin American people that want to come here. In fact, on average, I like people from Latin America. In many cases, they are harder working and spoiled third, fourth, fifth generation Americans. So that goes for black kids, white kids, Hispanic kids. Everybody knows they tend to get more spoiled, more rotten each generation. Until you'll see really nice white families with the worst grandkids you can imagine. Really nice black families with the worst black you know, grandkids you can imagine. Or Hispanic kids. I mean, it really is a phenomenon. So we're so corrupt and decadent, I, I, there's an argument that they sell that makes sense. Hey, just let in a bunch of third world people because, you know, we killed all our babies. We don't have kids and we need somebody to pay Social Security. And these people work pretty hard. The government is advertising now for deadbeats that want welfare and to have their babies for free. And the Democrats scoop them up and turn them into hardcore communists running around with red flags. I mean, I see commies every week now on the side of the road with red flags. I'll just be downtown having dinner and 500 commies march by, you know, screaming, kill the police. I mean, I got video. And so the globalists are making their move is the point. So I understand people wanting to come here. I know a lot of immigrants are great people. I'll say on average when it comes to common sense, appreciating things, probably have better souls than a fifth generation spoiled American. Just from what I've experienced. I know they're easier to wake up to the New World Order if I can communicate with them. But the globalists have looked at all the numbers. They've looked at all the angles, and they've decided we need giant Eastern European, giant Asian, giant Middle Eastern, and giant Central and South American populations up here. And we're going to politically use these people to break the back of the republic forever, take the guns, the whole nine yards. Same thing with Europe. And the socialist parties and the communist parties state that. And they admit that. And that's the key. They're arrogant. They think we're so stupid, they've admitted all this. I mean, look at these articles I have right here. Look at these articles. Germany and Austria lose borders, but now they've closed them. I'm going to explain what's behind that. But here's the key. Report Sweden's pro-refugee policies aren't working out so well. Well, if you want to destroy the country, they're working really well. It's like shooting somebody in the head and saying that bullet didn't work too well. No, it worked really well. Open borders, welfare state, bad news for Europe's most welcoming country. That's their national slogan. The Globe and Mail reports a major new research firm study. Now, get these numbers. In Sweden, 
where equality is revealed and equity is now entrenched. And it goes on to break it down that 58% of welfare payments go to immigrants, 16% to the population that's native. And a lot of them aren't really Swedes. Think about that. Staggering unemployment rate for immigrants, even after 15 years of living in the country, and skyrocketing welfare costs. And then it gets into the 1,400% rise in rapes. 95% of it is the immigrants. Now, these guys from the Middle East don't rape you if you're covered up and have a hood over your head. They'd be scared to death. If you're walking around with your face out, it means you want to be raped or you're a prostitute. And so that mixes with weird Western gangster culture because that's what the young kids are like. They're not really even Muslims anymore. It's like thugs that hate the West who think your 12-year-old daughter can be raped because she's wearing a short skirt. I mean, it is crazy. I mean, just, I'm sorry. People from the most third world Middle Eastern countries do not fit in Sweden, folks. They just don't. And the, in, the engineers know that. I mean, it just doesn't fit. It's like putting Martians in your living room. I just want to thank all of our affiliates, all our listeners, all our sponsors, and most importantly, the good Lord above. And then outside of that, most importantly in this operation, the incredible crew we've got, people behind the scenes, our reporters, writers, researchers, video editors, everybody. Uh, camera folks, uh, Matt did a great job up there with Joe shooting that video. I, I asked him, I went there and I said, was that sh taken from TV? I didn't see any bug on it. They went, no, that was, that was Matt shooting. That looked better than broadcast television, the video he shot of the Trump thing. So uh, great job. Just the amazing people we have. I'm very, very thankful. I'm very, very humble uh, to be here talking to all of you and humble to be talking to Alan in Colorado. You're on the air. Go ahead. Howdy, sir. Welcome. I wanted to... Uh I wanted to just uh, thank you for all that you do. I wanted to uh, just let you know that uh, it's very much appreciated. There is a pocket of resistance which is growing, and it is indeed taking right off. Um, one thing that uh, we as citizens are always being pushed uh, to do, and that's, that's to be held accountable for things. If I don't uh, pay my house payment, I'm held accountable to the mortgage company. Uh, we need to do that with the government. And instead of deciding that uh, we just need to lay down and take whatever, uh, you know, the biggest thing is to hold them accountable. One way that one can do that, one way that one can take back the power uh, that has been usurped from us is to visit www.accountability revolution.com I represent the uh, Center for Government Accountability and uh, it's an organization of citizens that uh, basically have gotten tired of whining about what we can do and doing nothing while each right is stripped from us on a daily basis I'm familiar with those organizations, and from what I've seen, I haven't had time to follow them too intensely. They're doing a really great job. But, yeah, it's important for everybody to get involved and to say no. And we have been usurped. We have been enslaved. Now they want to finish the job. That's why we're here saying no. And the public's never been more ready to wake up. God bless you. Good to hear from you. Frank in New York, thanks for holding her on the air. I just want to say uh, may God protect you on your path. Um, may God bless you, my brother. You Thank you. Job. That's very humbling. Thank you. Well, God's been blessing me and protecting me. Believe me. It's crazy. Um, I can't believe how God's worked in my life. It's been incredibly obvious, over the top. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned before, but the North American Union in 2005, what our, you know, George Bush signs into that um, treaty, basically. But people have to realize this actually was thought of in 1973 under the... Uh, Regionalized and adaptive model of global and world systems. That's right. The they rolled public. this out under 7277 and 63. They rolled it out in the 70s again. You're right. And then people said no. And they went, that's a conspiracy. No one ever wanted that. No one ever wanted a world government. What? I mean, it was in kids' cartoons in the 60s and stuff and, you know, newsreels in, in the schools you know, on, on the projectors. And exactly. Then folks said no. So they just denied it existed. But, but now it's out in the open. And one more thing about Al Gore for his carbon tax garbage. Um, 
you know, you made up a film on the end game when, you know, like with um, Galton and Darwinism and all that stuff, they wanted to like create the perfect species and they actually, you know, they, they had, you know, they inbreeded with each other, but these people actually inbreed wealth as well too. Do you know that Al Gore's daughter is married to the great, great, great grandson of, of Jacob Schiff? Yes, I did. The very same man that, that Nathan Rothschild sent in, you know, during the Civil War to actually hijack our country. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's all a couple hundred families that manage it, and there's like less than 20 that own the Anglo-American establishment. And every time you research them, you find one thing. They want one world government, they worship Lucifer, they hate everybody else, and they're all into organic food and non-GMO and purified water, and they won't take vaccines. And they sit there enjoying everyone else dying around them. And as far as I'm concerned, when we take the country back and the world back, there's going to be Nuremberg Part Two, and they're going to be in a lot of trouble because they're going to pay for their crimes in this life and the next. God bless you. David Knight's coming in. He'll take these calls as well. Welcome to the InfoWars News Wrap-Up, the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Radio Show. I'm David Knight, your host. We have several important issues that we're going to talk about this hour. Of course, one of the stories that's up on InfoWars.com is new Planned Parenthood video. Official admits to selling fresh aborted baby eyes, hearts, and gonads. We're going to talk about that. I know so we have some callers up here on the board that want to talk about immigration. One of the stories that uh, is on the top of the Drudge Report is L.A. touting itself as, quote, the northern capital of Latin America for the 2024 Olympic bid. They say in the video, which is only about a minute long, L.A. is called, quote, the western capital of the U.S., the northern capital of Latin America, and the eastern capital of the Pacific Rim. What do you think about that? Is L.A making a bid for the Olympics, or are they making a bid for the capital of Aslan? Let's talk to uh, Matt in Nebraska. Matt, what do you think about this headline, or did you want to talk about something else with immigration? Oh, he did. Okay, he dropped off. Um, we had somebody else that wanted to talk about immigration there as well, I think. Let's look at, um, uh, let's see, we had, well, actually, we had Jeff in Missouri. Hang on, Jeff, because I want to, I'm going to put some stuff out here about Hillary Clinton, and I want to get your comments on it. Let's go back to this Planned Parenthood video. This is something that's up on Infowars today. This is a new video that's been put out. This is part of the ongoing investigation by the Center for Medical Progress. And this particular video has Dr. Carolyn Westhoff. Now, she's Senior Medical Advisor for Planned Parenthood FA. This is the national umbrella organization. Uh, many of these are kind of... I guess you'd think of them as local franchisees. I don't know exactly what their their uh, financial structure is or their organizational structure. Nevertheless, this is the Umbrella Group, and she is the senior medical advisor. Here's what she had to say on the video she's walking them through. She says, we've been working with people who want particular tissues. Like, you know, they want cardiac or they want eyes or they want neural. We've seen this a lot, haven't we? We've seen this in several videos. But this is what she goes on to say. She says, certainly... Everything we provide, oh, gonads, oh yeah, gonads, everything we provide is fresh. And as Steve Watson points out, it's as if she's selling organic produce in a grocery store. Yeah, we got fresh eyes, fresh brains, fresh organs. And she goes on to say, obviously, we would have potential for a huge PR issue in doing this. You think? You think? Uh, she says, National Office of Abortion People and Planned Parenthood uh, would be concerned about this. She says, I've been talking to the executive director of the National Abortion Federation. We're trying to figure this out as an industry about how we're going to manage remuneration. In other words, pay. Because the headlines would be a disaster. Yeah, they have been, haven't they? Kind of. But actually, you know what? Nothing has really happened to them, has it? So I guess it hasn't been that much of a disaster, has it? She goes on to say, we have independent colleagues who generate a fair amount of income doing this. Hear that? Income. Income. You know what the law says? The law says you recoup your expenses. Income is what you have after your expenses. It's your profits, okay, they're talking about. They get a lot of income. She's not just talking about income. Uh, she's talking about profits here. She says, we have independents who generate a fair amount of income doing this. This is an issue that you might imagine we're not really that comfortable talking about on email. How many times do we have to have officials from these abortion, the abortion industry, from Planned Parenthood, from their affiliates, from the national industry, how many times do they have to be caught 
on video.